everybody welcome to travel america rv center we're going to be reviewing today the 25 foot sunseeker um, corner bed model so let's take a look at some outside features you will notice that you have different outlets that are out here that will work only when you're plugged in or if the generator's on so it's great at a campground when you want to hook up like a, a blender or anything that's outside it's right here this is a storage compartment this is where we fill our water tank. So there's a storage tank that we're going to review on the inside on your fresh water when you're traveling. This is where you put your garden hose at different campgrounds to refill that water supply. Here we have another compartment. There's plenty of storage for something that's this small. Also you have a pass-through compartment here which you'll notice goes straight through which is great for chairs and fishing poles and grass carpet. Back here is an access hatch for the same compartment. This hatch is where you're going to connect your electrical cord. So in, the, in your motorhome, you're going to have a cord that looks like this. This end is what connects there. When you go home from me, you're going to have a 110 adapter on the end. You're going to run your house extension to here and then plug it in before you leave on your trip. That's going to convert your refrigerator from your propane setting that I've set it on to electric. This is the only time we're using a house extension cord. At the campground, you'll take your adapter off and then that will reveal 30 amp for the post. So make sure you leave your house extension cord at home. The next thing you're gonna notice is you got a coax cable input. Some motorhomes have coax cable lines, some do not. You may wanna go to Home Depot or Lowe's or one of your hardware stores, get about a 25 foot coax cord. This way you know it's yours and you have it. There's no damage on the ends. So when you get to the campground, you can connect to the park cable if you decide to. On this side, you're gonna notice, notice the city water connection. It says connect garden hose here. So in your motorhome, we're going to supply you a garden hose. This hose is what's gonna be connecting here. Now, I also gave you a water regulator. This regulator must be used with this hose to the motorhome. So when you get to the campground, you'll connect this, connect your garden hose to here, and the other end to their water tap. You're gonna turn it on, and that's on-demand water. That means every faucet, toilet bowl, shower that you turn on, as soon as you open up those faucets like at home, you're gonna have unlimited pressure coming in. Now, some of the campgrounds I've been hearing up in the upstate area, um, if you find that your water pressure is not great coming out of your sinks and your shower using this device, then you can remove this device and this way that will um, give you a better water flow. But it's recommended to use this unless you see that um, pressure is, a, is decreasing at that campground. You may want to talk to me about that. When we talked about filling up your water tank on the other side, I've given you one of these little fill hoses. And before you leave your campground, you'll connect your garden hose to this, stick it in the side, let her fill up, check your panel inside under fresh. That will tell you what your level is. And or you'll see water rushing out of the side of the motorhome, which is completely fine. That just means it's full. And take that off, put all that stuff in your compartment. If you notice on this side, We've given you some leveling blocks. Some people use them, some do not. That's if you get to a campground, you want to put them under the wheels, give you a little bit more stability, feel free. When we get to the sewage compartment, we've given you some gloves. You may want to bring some of your own. We've started you with some gloves. Your sewer hose. So, connecting at the campground where you're going to stay, full hookups. This goes into their septic. You turn it, you open up the, up the lever and you open up your gray valve only and leave it open at the campground. The toilet valve is always remaining closed until your monitor panel inside on black reads two thirds to full. Why do we do that? Because there's toilet paper in this part of the tank and you don't want to ever leave a valve wide open so that all your water runs out and your toilet paper starts to clog. So, Camping in a campground with full hookups. Hose on, gray left open, toilet left closed. The night before you leave the campground, you may want to close your gray to accumulate some sink and shower water so that before you leave for the final um, toilet disposal, when you leave in the morning, you can pull your toilet one first. It's a gate valve, just open and close it, folks. Once you see it stop wiggling, close it, 
pull the gray and that simply rinses out this garden, this sewer hose. That's how we do it. Now, there's another way of toilet disposal. Some campgrounds like Hither Hills, um, uh, national parks, they don't have full hookups at your site. So that means you're going to do a dump. And when we connect this hose into their septic for that one dump, you're going to pull the toilet one first. And then when that's done emptying, you're going to close it and you're going to follow it by pulling the gray. That's just going to simply rinse out your hose with your sink and shower dirty water. Do not forget to put a toilet chemical pouch down the toilet bowl after you have closed that toilet valve. And you also want to press the pedal down on the toilet, add a little water into your tank for about 60 seconds. That will help dissolve that toilet tablet so it doesn't sit in your toilet tank undissolved. Once you're done, simply make sure your valves are closed. You'll put your sewer hose back in here and we're done on the toilet disposal. You'll notice this one has an exterior shower. Not many people use it. It's good if you're gonna be spending some time at the beach. You wanna rinse off your feet or rinse out something. This is your gas fill. Just be careful in and out of those gas stations, folks. You wanna make sure you watch that video on the um, webpage. My website all the way down to the bottom, how to drive an RV video. You wanna watch that. It shows you your pivot points in and out of that gas station to keep you guys safe and without damage. Over here, you'll find there's one more storage compartment. This motorhome has a lot of storage. You can put different items in here as well. Always make sure that you're locking your locks all around before you travel. 751 silver key is gonna be on your key ring. You'll probably have two. They're all keyed the same. Just to make sure all your compartments are locked. All right, so if we come around the back, you'll see that we have a hitch on the back. That's strictly for bike racks. Anything that's not towable, we do not allow towing in a, on a motorhome rental. So if you want a bike rack, I rent them for $65 for the whole time that you're out. If you have a bike rack that you want to use, make sure that you bring it. You'll notice the ladders are already modified. No access to the roof. We don't want anybody on the roof. We don't want the kids on the roof falling off, things like that. So we stay off the roof. You'll notice the awning is beautiful, it's extended. It has LED lights and it's electric. You want to make sure before you leave any campsite, you roll up the awning before you sleep. You roll up the awning if you're, if you're venturing in the campground for the day elsewhere. Never leave your awning extended unless you're using it. The storm comes in, wind comes in, it's an expensive awning to replace. You don't want to have that problem. The most important is do your full walk around before you leave that campground. You want to make sure that all your compartments are locked, your awning is back where it belongs, and you haven't left anything on the campground picnic table, such as, you know, um, chairs and your rug and stuff. Just make sure everything's in the motorhome. So before you leave and you pull out, do your walk around. Okay, so we're going to go inside and let's see what we can find inside. Okay, so welcome to this living space. Really, really small motorhome, but super roomy once this room is extended. So let's start here. You're going to notice some electronics here. This is your monitor panel. We spoke prior to that about your fresh water in your toilet. So let's start there on sanitation. Gray is your dirty sink and shower water. Black is your toilet water, and they also run the bathroom sink into the toilet tank. So brushing teeth, shaving, you're going to fill up that black tank faster. So you want to make sure that if you're in a campground that has no uh, sewer disposal at your site, you may want to wash your hands and things like that in the kitchen sink. Then you have fresh water. If you hit the fresh water, it'll tell you how much fresh water capacity you have in that storage tank. Now, when we're connected to a garden hose, we do not use a water pump. You notice this water pump button right here? This water pump, it's similar to a boat. It's going to pump up the water out of that storage compartment that we filled through your sink faucets and your shower faucets and your toilet. When you're connected to a garden hose, we don't use a water pump. We're only using that if you're out in the middle of nowhere. Once you're hooked to a garden hose, you're going to get the pressure from their, um, their source. Okay, so let's keep looking. Propane gas, 
LPG. That's going to fluctuate when you get it from two thirds to full. That's perfectly fine. Propane gas, what does it run? Hot water. If you decide to heat hot water on gas, we recommend you run it on electric if you're hooked up to um, campground uh, 30 amp cord. Um, your stove top, your oven, and also your furnace. Now, if you guys are camping in October, November, and you need the furnace, you do not want to keep a furnace on all day long if you're not living in here. The furnace, it eats a lot of propane gas. So kind of watch what you're using, check it every day, and only use your furnace when you're living here. Um, daytime if you're in here or definitely sleeping at night. Shut your furnace off when you guys are going to venture out for the day. Okay, these are your lights for the main cabin. Your generator, start and stop switch is here. So when we start a generator, what do we use a generator for? We're going to use a generator for when we're driving along. If you have more than two people and you need central air, you need the generator on. Generator you need on for um, your outlets, regular outlets, like at home, you'll find them in different locations. Um, so you put your generator on. How do we do that? We prime it first. Always prime a generator. That puts some fuel in the line. So this way she's not starving for gas. And then you'll hit her and you'll hold it. You hold it a couple seconds, let her start. Do not let her, once she starts, remove your finger. Now, we wait 40 seconds for the generator to give you electric. There's a transfer relay process. So 40 seconds will go by and your microwave will illuminate. Your microwave is the true indicator of electric in a motorhome. Not your lighting, because they're LEDs off the battery. So we wait 40 seconds and then she should come on. See how she came on? So once you get that, then you know you're ready to turn on your thermostat. You know you're ready to plug a, um, an appliance in. So we're gonna, Finish up that as far as your appliances on overloading your generator. That's going to be next. The next thing is hot water. Water heater. When we're connected at a campground, the last thing that you do is turn on the electric hot water heater. That will give you hot water unlimited while you're connected to an electrical cord at the campground. When you get ready to pack up for the day, you'll shut that off. Now, if you're out in a campground or national park that has no, um, no electric, they're going to limit you on your generator running time. So say you like to take a shower at 10 o'clock at night. They've already said no generator time, no more running hours, okay, for quiet time. You would then turn your hot water heater on on propane gas, wait 10 minutes, take your shower, wash your dishes, and then shut it down. That's only if you do not have an electric hookup or you can't run your generator. Arctic, we don't use, that's for winter time. And driver's side rear light, that gives you a light option on the driver's side if you're hooking up your sewer and electric at night and it's dark, you can put on this side light. Slide out room, the slide out room in this motorhome will not function if the engine's running. Engine has to be off. Generator must be on, or you must be plugged in at a campground. If you notice, we're going to bring in the room. We're going to hit in. See how she comes in? We don't want anybody sitting on this room when we move it. It's strictly empty, okay? And then she'll come all the way back in. Make sure that you bring her in completely, and you extend her completely so that her gas gets sealed. Let's talk about a little bit on plumbing. Plumbing, as we spoke about, water pump and all of that, we reviewed that. This is your kitchen sink. Back here, they put the bathroom sink back here. So you got your bathroom sink. And if you look in here, you got your shower and then you have your toilet. So those are where your plumbing is. Remember what I said, if you are not connected to a garden hose, you must have the water pump on to use your water. Do not leave a water pump on indefinitely. Shut it down when you're done. We do that because if you end up running out of water in your storage tank, you can burn out the water pump. So use it, shut it off. Try to make a habit of that. You're going to notice your GFI outlet is located here in this motorhome. So if you find that your outlets and lights are not working, always check your GFI and reset that. You'll find various lighting switches in different places. 
Okay, so let's talk about TV and stereo. This unit right here, if you turn it on, this is your radio, inside and outside. It's also Bluetooth. So if you want to find a real easy way of how to pair it, go to YouTube, type in Jensen, and you'll see this radio pop up, and it'll show you how to pair it. It's the easiest thing to do. This pairs your music off your phone or your device, inside and outside. TV is also connected to this device for a DVD player. I don't know how many people use DVD players, but this has a DVD. So you can load your DVD in here, and you can put your remote on um, component or AV, and you can watch a movie here while you're traveling. You do not need to have the generator on in this motor home to travel using the TV DVD for the kids so they can stay seat belted and they can watch a movie and stay occupied. You're going to notice um, outlets, charging ports are over there for their phones or their devices. They, those are powered up all the time. So they could leave their phone charging. You do not have to have the generator on. In this cabinet, you'll find a privacy curtain, Velcro, that goes along this area drops down so that nobody's looking in from the outside campground or wherever you may be parked that goes back in just try not to grab that when you're cleaning out the motorhome because then it'll be missing and i will be calling you okay microwave let's go to here we spoke about how the microwave clock tells you it's on we never use a microwave and um the air conditioning together whether you're plugged in at the campground or whether we're off the generator Reason is it takes 30 amps to boost it on. You don't want to overload. So if you feel you need to make something in the microwave and the air conditioning's on, shut it off, make your item, and then turn it back on. You'll find that you'll pop a breaker. If you pop a breaker, you'll notice the fuse panel is right by the bed. So you'll check your breakers, and then you have your fuses. If your fuses are blown, there will be a light that illuminates, and there's extra fuses placed in your glove box. Oven, you want to make sure you lift your stove top glass up before you light the stove. It is propane gas, it is not electric. This will shatter if it feels heat. So you want to lift that up, you turn on your oven, you use your, you use your sparker here, or you can bring um, a barbecue lighter with you. The oven, to light a motorhome oven, you're going to turn it to pilot on, you're gonna push this in, and then you're gonna stick a barbecue lighter to the back pilot, and you're gonna light it while it's pushed in. Once you see a blue flame, you'll release this, and then you'll turn it up. And then this way, that will give you oven use. Again, if you wanna watch a video, go to YouTube, type in Suburban RV Lighting Oven. You'll see plenty of Suburban videos showing you exactly how to light that. Okay, so now we notice this in the back has its own little TV, DVD fed through the other side. And it's also 12 volts, so you can watch this without a generator on. This is your thermostat, folks. This thermostat, if you touch it and you hit it, you'll see fan, air conditioning is a snowflake, furnace says furnace. The furnace runs hot air through the floor. The air conditioning is obviously through the roof. And then when you're done with it, you want to zone this down to it says off. Give it a couple seconds and she'll cycle down and she'll shut off. Okay, we're almost getting to the end. You got your lights inside. You'll see different switches from here and then you'll see switches that are located in the bathroom and by the bathroom sink. These are little hatches that you can put stuff in. There's outlets in here as well. For different devices your TV folks has a locking knob on the bottom make sure you unlock this knob before you put your TV back or forward do not pull by the glass you want to make sure that this is locked top and bottom this has a safety net that seat belts so if you notice the seat belt will go into a seat belt little clip on the top there and on the top there okay this has a fan that gives you a little ventilation if you don't need your air conditioning on you'll pull this down you'll twist this opened and then you turn on your fan 
that'll pull the hot air out if you just need a little bit of a breeze without using your generator for your air conditioning or being plugged in. This is 12 volts, so this will work off your batteries. And then you just shut it off and you twist it back down. There is a rain guard on the roof, so you can actually be running this if it's raining. It has a cover. All right, sleeping, last but not least, up here. This cushion fits here. And if you notice, it's got little hooks for the ladder, which stores here. Kids do not climb up from here, just for storage. This is a queen. Use queen flat sheets. Up here is the easiest. This table comes off the post. You'll notice it has a little locking knob down here. The table then lays on this ledge. But the post goes on the floor. And then you'll notice these two cushions come off and make a puzzle. Seat belts are all in this area. Make sure the kids are in seat belts when you're traveling. And again, another thing, never have your children or adults or anybody laying up there while you're driving. It is not a safe space. Okay, and finally, you got your rear bed. Super comfortable. It's a Serta. You want to use um, queen sheets on this one as well. All right, so let's talk about the cab for a little bit. Not a lot to discuss. It's like sitting in a Ford van. So you have, we're just gonna leave that on right now so we don't kill the battery. You'll see a microphone here. We will Bluetooth connect your phone. So when you pick it up, you'll be able to get your phone calls right here. That's your microphone. Rear cameras and side cameras come up here as well. Um, never trust a camera when you're backing in at a campground. Always have somebody watching. They could be low-lying trees or branches and things. You don't want to have an oops. So always have somebody out there checking. Charging ports are here, here. Um, and you also have your mirrors are electric. You'll see right and left for mirror adjustments for the top glass. And the on and off switch is for heated mirrors if you're traveling in um, uh, conditions that have um, ice on your on your glass, so that's kind of nice too. And then in your glove box, you'll find those fuses that we discussed. Always, always, always bring a toolbox. Motorhomes are like boats. You never know if you have to duct tape something, electrical tape, power drill, um, screwdrivers, always have a toolbox. You may never use it, but it's always great to know that you have it. All right, well, there you go, folks. 25 foot Sunseeker corner bed. Great little motorhome for four to six people. You don't have to go big all the time. It's got a little bit of everything. So we wanna make sure you stay safe, review the video as many times as you have to, and let's go RV.